Hello everybody, I'm Ian Abernethy and in this video I want to share with you a recent combination, or flow drill if you like, uh, that we did at the dojo. Now the main method I wanted to work was pulling the enemy forward while at the same time we deliver an inverted kick to the thigh in order to stop them stepping forwards. This results in uh, the enemy's posture being disrupted and therefore we can take advantage of that fact. That was a primary method I wanted to drill. But rather than just doing that over and over and over again, I always prefer to put it in context, to put some other methods around it. Students find it more interesting and enjoyable, and again, it contextualizes the method as well. So what we did on this one was we started from a clinch position, which we have in Nihanshi Kata, uh, a method of spinning, which we find in uh, Niseishi or Nijishio Kata. We then have the knee, which you find in loads of Kata. We then did the method, the inverted kick with the pull. Again, that inverted kick is found in lots of different forms, Sishan, Pasai, loads of different ones. Uh, what we then did was we moved to the side using the hand as a datum set there when we hit. Now using the hand to locate the enemy is a very common uh, principle throughout all the kata, but the method we're doing here looks a lot like the start of Niseishi or Nijishiho. So again, lots of things going on, and these are katas the students are all working at the moment too, so it's a nice way to put it into context for them. As usual, you know, we drill it with a partner for so long, then what we do is we put it on the pads, you know, so people get to actually, you know, put some impact in with the techniques, and then when we start sparring, we say, okay, you know, with safety provisions in place, try and get that method working in sparring too. So, so yeah, so here's the uh, this combination that we recently worked uh, in the dojo. Obviously, be pretty careful when you practice. Uh, but as soon as you come around the uh, knee, body's not an ideal target, but if it's all we've got, it's all we've got, right? Pull that one back, bang! So you see, as I'm kicking there, I'm pushing his head forwards from there. So he's now leaning forward. I want you to move to one side, keeping your hand on his head. So I know exactly where that head is. It's like the drill we did before. So if Dan starts to come up now, I know he is. He's okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to aim wherever he happens to be, I am just underneath my own hand. He's like, okay, so I can feel where it is. And the fact that I'm now applying means I'm in a really good position. So you'll be clinched in wherever you are, you'll be a little bit, a little bit to go from here. Spin, knee, kick, head comes forward, push, aim underneath your own hand, underneath your own hand. With that shot in the right from the side of the door. Is that okay? Okay, so the idea is that you're just trying to continuously increase your advantage until you've won. Give that a little more take on the back there. Think of all the important parts of this, you've got this initial clinch, which is from the Hanji. You've got the speed, which you find in need shield. You know, from there, comes around, then you can kneel the end of it across, which is need shield as well. You've got the, the crescent kick, you know, which you find like Passai, uh, Cezanne, all those kind of ones. And then from there, as I move to the side from there, I've got this, and I'm pushing the these, we'll have to get need shield and safety again. So all of that's within Kappa, right? But the main bit I want you to focus on, that once, you, once you've done that speed, and you put your knee in as you pull back, try and get this timing right. So you're not kicking and then pulling, it happens at the same time. So if I slow it down, you're not. Does that make sense? So his leg gets straight down from there. So not only is it painful, but it also makes it easier to pull forwards because I've got a prop here that I'm pulling him forwards over. If that prop wasn't there, there's a potential as I pull, it just moves in. Does that make sense? But if I prop the knee at the same time that I do that from there, so I've got a knee. You know, which again, you know, we may move backwards from, we may move say down, but when I've got this bit here, the timing right there, boom, that's what sets that up. Right. Does that make sense? If you care, you've got head extend each other's knees when you do it, but you think about it. Is that okay? Right. So one of the things when the partners, because the partner's got to switch them out, there's that second between when you've got a whole fake head, sorry, real head to fake head. So as a result, everything slows down, you can see what's going on. But you've got to remember in the mess of a real fight, it, it'll be off what you feel, not what you see. Right, you know, feeling is quicker than seeing. Loads of tests done on that as well. You, you know, you're about twice as quick off reaction speed from touch as you are from vision. Right, so this is what we can start off, off, off from here. We've got this position, put it on a little bit of dirty, speed up his head, double braces for that strong knee, jet on his feet. But when he moves to here, what some of you do is he puts his hand up, because there's a, there's a change in pace there, you put the pad there, and you're letting his hand behind him. So then you go and move. But I think the idea was, what I've got in here is, you know what I mean? So I want that hand on the head, so no matter where it is now, it doesn't matter where it moves, I just should aim bang beneath my own hand. So I need to kind of instill that practice on the pad. So when I've done my knee, I'll put this one in again, you get the boot there and touch the pad. He's like, okay, so you're reminding yourself of that idea. If your partner wants to move it a bit, you know, to 
same again. It should make any difference because you just aim underneath your own hand. Is that okay? So we've got that husband and wife hands out here in play. Is that okay? And the only reason some of you are not doing it is because you feel you don't need to, because by definition, when you swap them out, it slows down. But you need to, it's good to get that, oh yeah, I should always be touching, I should always be feeling, especially in this close range thing that we're doing now. Is that okay? Finishing off on that one then.